Wonderful. So we can start now. Wonderful. So hello, everyone, and thank you for being connected. You're about 100 people uh, to be connected now from across Europe. Uh, it is my privilege to moderate this conference, which will focus on uh, the recovery plan for Europe and its uh, special implications for families. So our continent uh, already hit by a demographic winter since 2015 is now on the verge of a massive social crisis following the coronavirus health crisis. Uh, we are now at a crossroad of history and the de decision that the, the European Union and its different member countries will make in the coming months will be absolutely determining. I think we can all agree on that. It will be determining for the next decades. So we are now gathered here today to discuss the top priorities to be addressed uh, in order to ensure uh, the sustainability uh, of the institution of family in the EU, whose survival totally depends on family. I think we all agree on that too, uh, but we will see uh, in our conversation. The so-called recovery plan for Europe, uh, developed by the European authorities to help repair uh, the economic and social damage caused by the pandemic, and which is meant, as they say, to lay the foundations for a modern and a more sustainable Europe is already subject to debates with regard to its benefits for families, as we will see. So I will leave that for our speakers to explain as the available time today is very limited. Uh, in fact, uh, the Hungarian Minister for Families, Katalin Novak, who is honoring us with her presence today, must leave in half an hour, um, about half an hour. So we will yield the floor to her right away uh, after a brief introduction by Vincenzo Bassi, uh, President of the Federation uh, of Catholic Family Association in Europe and promoter of this conference. Uh, just one last thing, uh, people, um, please ask your questions in the Q&A box uh, because the questions in the chat won't be considered. So uh, just uh, one detail to be followed. So Mr. Bassi, please take the floor. So thank you very much. I'm very proud. Uh, for me, this is a dream to discuss about these topics. Uh, our goal is very clear. We want to build an alliance uh, uh, among uh, civil society on one side and uh, uh, European institutions and governments in uh, European Union on the other uh, side in order uh, to include uh, in the proposed uh, European Union recovery plan uh, also demographic and family policies. It is urgent and we know that uh, to consider uh, uh, to use the funds uh, uh, for uh, uh, demographic and uh, mm, family policies as an investment. We know that it is uh, not the best moment to speak about uh, recovery fund, but we are optimistic and uh, uh, we know that we are going to solve uh, our uh, prob problems for uh, the greater uh, good uh, of uh, our communities. So thank you very much for discussing with us. And we hope also with the help of Mrs. Novak to start building this very, very important alliance. Thank you very much, Mr. Bassi, for this introduction. I shall now waste no time in inviting Minister Novak to share her remarks with us for about 10 minutes, and then she will answer a few questions before leaving. So, Mr. No Minister Novak, the floor is yours. Thank you so much, and uh, thank you for the invitation indeed. Uh, bonjour, uh, hello to everybody, buongiorno. Uh, and thank you so much uh, for the opportunity. I think it is uh, very important that we touch upon these important issues uh, before, after and during the COVID crisis as well. So I think these are the topics we should always put in on the table and uh, not only discuss, but we have to act. And uh, I think uh, it is good if discussion is before action, but uh, action should also follow uh, discussions. Uh, so. My two points are, or two main main um, issues are, first, uh, let's uh, speak about demography and family policies briefly, uh, not even talking about the COVID crisis. And secondly, uh, what is uh, the, our challenge right now that we have this coronavirus situation all over the world? 
So first of all, uh, if you look at Europe and if we look at the demographic situation of Europe or, or the whole modern world, we see that we have a huge demographic uh, challenge ahead of us. Uh, it, namely in Hungary, in the last four decades, we have lost 10% of our population. That's Hungary, but there is not a single state uh, concerning, uh, including Italy or, or France or each and every uh, European state where the fertility rate would reach two. So it means that in all of our countries, the fertility rate is below the substitution level. Uh, that means that uh, replacement level. So that means that we have a huge demographic problem. And uh, there are two options we can choose. First, if we don't even talk about this, and that's what happens in Europe, we don't even touch upon this issue, uh, but we give bad answers uh, without even raising the question. Uh, or second, that's what we try to do in Hungary, is that we speak openly, publicly about this challenge and we try to overcome it. Um, so what happens at the European level? Uh, we, we don't even say, uh, say anything about our main demographic challenges, but we offer an answer, a solution, which is migration. That is mass migration, which, is, which can be a legitimate answer to the demographic challenges, but it shouldn't be the only one, and it shouldn't be without uh, any decision or discussion. It's not natural that we have to replace our children with, out, uh, with uh, resources from the outside. We could try to do it uh, from our inner resources as well. And so that's uh, the second option, what we chose in Hungary 10 years ago, our government, uh, that we said that uh, we will concentrate on, uh, on um, in, in enabling young people to have as many children as they want to at the moment when they want to have them. And uh, we have many means, many resources. I don't have the time to go into details. I, I will just uh, very briefly sum up it for you. So first of all, we have a very solid basement uh, in our constitution, which declares the importance of families, uh, which declares the union of one man and one, one woman and a voluntary decision as a marriage. Uh, which is the basis of also of uh, uh, our societies and the families. Uh, the family ties are either um, uh, based upon a marriage or the ties between a child and the parent. Uh, so we have a solid uh, basement in our uh, constitution and also, uh, secondly, financial resources, which means that we invest, I never use the word spend, because we invest almost 5% of our GDP to, to family issues, that is uh, the highest uh, in the world. And, uh, and we could increase it uh, to the two and a half uh, as much as it used to be 10 years ago. Uh, so we really have a financial commitment and just let me state you some examples. For example, in Hungary, if a young couple decides to get married uh, and the woman is below 41, uh, then they are eligible for a, a general purpose loan credit uh, without any interest rate of almost 30,000 uh, euros, uh, which can, they can get and, and uh, spend for anything. And they try to they start to reimburse. Once the first child is on the way, then we suspend the payback for three years. Once the second child is on the way, uh, then we suspend again for three years and we reduce the credit by 30%. Once the third child is on the way, so in the pregnancy, we just annul the whole credit. So the whole credit is gone. They don't have to pay back anything anymore. Literally, they can get 30,000 uh, euros, almost 30,000 euros, so 10 million forints, in order to start their common lives. And again, for building or buying a house, they can get a, another 30,000 euros and again, beneficial credit. Or for example, if the, the woman has got a student loan, then we will uh, dis decrease or, or totally uh, write off the student loan once the children arrive. Uh, or uh, we give, uh, 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 we, we just um, build uh, nurseries, daycare services in order to, to enable women to work and have children at the same time. But in Hungary, a woman can stay three years long at home with a child, 
can also choose to work, can also choose to, to, to spend this time with the children. It's up to them. So we just give liberty, we just give the freedom of choice uh, and each and every family can decide on how to, uh, to make benefit, take benefit of these uh, uh, resources. And uh, the third element of our family policy after the constitution and the solid ideological or legal basement uh, and the financial framework uh, is the third one is that uh, uh, we introduced a family friendly, a family oriented policy in Hungary uh, and a, a mentality, a way of thinking. So we encourage it. Just look at uh, the tape, this uh, ta tableau uh, just behind me. You can see this logo, it says family friendly country, family friendly Hungary actually. So this is just the sign of showing our intention to, to have family friendly policies uh, in each and every field of uh, life, not only governance. Uh, so that's the first point. The second one is that uh, what do we do in the COVID crisis? Uh, the COVID crisis raises the same issue. What should we invest in? What should we concentrate on? Either we give up our family orientation and say that we just need economic recovery without uh, concentrating on the interest of families, or we say that we can do both at the same time. We can say that, yes, we need economic recovery, but in the same time, we have to support families, those who are before bearing a child or those who are already raising children, because uh, the decision of having a child uh, is in, in, in very often taken in these difficult times as well. So young people don't have to give up on their futures just because we have this COVID crisis, uh, which we are facing uh, all. Uh, it, 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 they should not be uh, uh, forced uh, to, to take these uh, decisions. But uh, on the other hand, we can help them to be able to start their family lives right now if they are ready to do so. And also we can help families. So what do we do in Hungary? Uh, we try to give impetus to our economy through our uh, construction in industry. But in the meantime, we are supporting the building of family homes. So we are not building uh, uh, shopping malls. We are not building offices. We are building houses in Hungary. And from the 1st of January next year, we are starting the ever largest uh, construct, family home construction program in Hungary. Uh, that means that we give all kinds of financial support for families who are about to either renovate their houses and homes or who are about to build or buy a new home, a new house. So that means that we cut off the costs of buying or building a new home. Uh, and we also uh, give financial aid, financial support uh, for those who are about to have children, who are already raising children. And for these families or for these young couples, we give, give the chance to build or buy uh, their, own, their new homes. And in the me meantime, we are recovering, uh, uh, we are having our uh, economy recover from this very difficult situation. And of course, uh, we do, do help uh, the families right now in, in these difficult times to overcome uh, the, uh, these weeks and months. Uh, so we give all kinds of benefits, but these, these are not uh, uh, in the long run. But we, what we do is this uh, family uh, home support uh, subsidy, which we start uh, for the 1st of January next year. So very briefly, that's what we do here in Hungary. And our main aim is that no matter if there is a coronavirus crisis in Hungary and in the world, or there isn't, before the corona, during the corona, and after the corona, we have to concentrate on family values, and we have to have uh, enable young people, young couples, to start their family lives the earliest possible when they are ready to do so. And if the child is there, if the children are born, then we have to support families to, to, to live better because what we want to reach in Hungary is that we want to, to uh, annual or to write off totally all the disadvantages families face who have children vis-a-vis -vis those families that don't or those people that decide not to have children. So that's what we are working on in Hungary. That's what we've done in the last 10 years and very happy for the alliance being built right now or being formed right now at we are all time at at your disposal if you need any 
hints if you need any piece of information. And we are also very much looking for your ideas and, uh, and your questions uh, as well regarding our family policies and our common challenges. Thank you so much. Thank you very much, Minister Novak, for these uh, thoughts. Uh, we will now take a few minutes for a brief Q&A with the audience before you have to leave, uh, as we already have a few questions. First of all, I would mention a remark from uh, Yogi Olveni, Hungarian member of the European Parliament, who says that Minister Novak has been a keynote speaker in the several European conferences he organized uh, with the cooperation of several uh, Hungarian family organizations to present the good practices in family policy and youth transitions in Hungary. Uh, we have now a question from Professor Giovanna Rossi on behalf of Italian Grandparents Association, Nonni uh, 2.0 from Milan. Her question is about child raising leave for grandparents in uh, Hungary. Uh, so since last January 1st, when the rule came into force, how many uh, grandparents in Hungary have been made in use of it? How many grandchildren were involved, more or less? Are they other laws in Hungary uh, that uh, recognize the social relevance of grandparents in the family and therefore uh, in society? Thank you very much for this important question and also the remark of uh, uh, MEP Hölveni. Uh, this question relates an important issue because uh, we tend to forget that families are about different generations. Family is not just about uh, those with young children, but it's also uh, the grandparents or the great grandparents living with the families. So we are speaking about the cooperation of different uh, generations, which we have to push a little bit and which we have to improve and which we have to enable. So that's uh, our challenge also in Hungary. What the, what the new legislation is from this uh, year, 1st of January, is that Grandparents have also become eligible for this grandparental leave, let's call it that. So the grandparent, a working grandparent, so not a pensioner, but a working grandparent can, can take benefit of this uh, grandparental leave uh, until the age of two of the, the grandchild, even afterwards it's, uh, from, with another title, uh, so for, for three years actually. Uh, and uh, it makes it possible for the families where there is a small child and both parents work, or there is a single mother or father raising a small child uh, who don't want to send the child to the daycare service or, or, or crash, uh, then they can, uh, the, the, the grandma or the grandpa can stay at home with the child and while uh, receiving the same benefits as the mom or the pop, uh, the, the dad would. Uh, the question relates to the number who took uh, actually already practically benefit of this option. It is very, uh, very low right now because of the COVID crisis. You know, we, we had this legislation from the 1st of January and that COVID hit uh, in February, March. Uh, and that means that it's not really uh, now it's not very typical that grandparents can uh, stay at home with the children. So we cannot really uh, refer to this number so far. But it's much more the option itself, it's, it's much more the opportunity itself, which is important, I think, that we give this chance also to families to balance their lives the way they would like to. Thank you very much. We have now a question from uh, Lithuanian uh, MP, uh, Varekis, I'm sorry if the pronunciation is not uh, correct. So he is asking, how would you evaluate the general impact on the pandemic, uh, on the family situation in Europe? Does it create another uh, crisis for families uh, and green light for sexual minorities? Or is it the real, a real chance for a family uh, revival? This is his question. Thank you so much for the question. I am by nature optimistic. Uh, and uh, I, I read articles, uh, I see uh, comments where they already bury the family and they say that uh, it's over for families because the COVID crisis has shown that there is no need for families. I, I am totally at the other uh, opinion saying that uh, the COVID crisis also showed the importance of family ties. I mean, who do you, yourself, if you raise your question to yourself, who do you care about the most? Uh, who do you fear for the most? 
it's your mother, father, grandmother, grandfather, or your, your closest related uh, uh, family members. It's, I think uh, uh, they are for us the most important who we would like to protect also from the effects of the family, of the COVID crisis. And I think that this pandemic also uh, showed the, the, the lack of, uh, uh, how, how bad it is, how bad it feels when we have the lack of the presence of the family members. For example, I haven't met my parents in the last months and uh, we suffer, <laughs> we all suffer. My parents do suffer, we do suffer and our children also do suffer. Uh, we, can, we can talk online, but it's not the same. So what we wait for the most is to be together again. So I think uh, sometimes we, we understand the importance of something when we lose it. And that's the same thing right now, then, that we, we can experience what it feels like if we don't have our family members with us, present, always available. And then we can value much more how it is when we have them. And uh, also a, a less, uh, uh, let's say, a, a, a less subjective uh, point of view, so more objective one, if we look at the numbers, for example, in Hungary, uh, the demographic numbers, it is very positive. Uh, uh, the, the number of marriages, for example, has even grown despite the coronavirus. Can you imagine that in Hungary in the last 10 months, or, or let's say in, in even last year as well, but in the last months, there were more marriages than in the last four decades, so 40 years ever in, these, in this period of year. Uh, and the number of divorces is lower than ever in the last 60 years. The fertility rate is uh, more, more than 25% higher right now than it used to be 10 years ago. So I think that uh, all these, uh, these data, these uh, numbers reflect how valuable the investment in family support is. Uh, so it, it, it shows that this family policy can be successful and it can go hand in hand with a successful economic policy. And I think that's something, that's a lesson that could be learned by other states as well, that you don't have to fear of having a strong family policy uh, and, and, and think that then you will give up on your economic uh, um, goals. No, the, the two can go hand in hand with each other. Thank you very much. Do you have one quick comment on the current constitutional amendment uh, from uh, Edith uh, Vrivatsky, who uh, said that uh, a father is a man, a mother is a woman? Would you have a, a, sl a small, a quick comment about that before uh, Mr. Bassi asks you one, one other question before you have to leave? Of course. Uh, so we have now uh, an amendment of the constitution uh, that we are discussing it right now in the parliament. Actually, we are going to vote about this uh, next week uh, in, the, in the Hungarian National Assembly or the Hungarian Parliament. And uh, this, uh, uh, in, in this amendment, there are, from this aspect, two important uh, points. One, is, one says that uh, the mother is a woman and the father is a man. And the other one says that uh, the, the mar marriage is... Uh, the union of one man and one woman, because it wasn't clear so far. It was just, it, it said that uh, the marriage is uh, the, the union of a woman and a man, and now one woman, one man. So we precise it. So it, it should necessarily be one woman and one man, um, and upon, based upon their voluntary decision. So these are the two amendments relating this issue in our constitution. And uh, it was our initiative, uh, and uh, uh, I, I, I say it out loud as well that uh, I very much uh, initiated and supported this uh, amendment of the constitution because um, there it seems to be so evident. And I think uh, we are lucky to say that in Hungary this is this is an evidence. It is it is an axiom. So nobody uh, would say that. I mean. Even if you, you attack it, uh, what is your point? I mean, do you say that, no, a mother is not a woman and the father is not a man? I mean, there is no 
real opposition uh, con concerning the substance. Of course, concerning the fact itself that we put it in our constitution, there is already a huge opposition, uh, but uh, sometimes you have to even declare the most obvious things, which we seem to be obvious right now, but uh, it seems that it not necessarily will be uh, in, in some years or, or in some decades, because these, uh, uh, these very basic principles are being undermined uh, all the time. And uh, we just say that we have to protect our children because uh, of course we are, we are uh, mostly tolerating and, uh, and, uh, um, uh, and giving all rights to sexual minorities. That is evident, of course, uh, but uh, that's an issue what happens with you when you're an adult and how you live your life and what, are, what your, your uh, choices are and how you, you uh, want to have your private life. It's totally up to you. And we give full uh, freedom in this issue, of course, in Hungary. And there is not a single, single question about these human rights uh, issues. But on the other hand, it's another issue how we raise our children and how we can protect our children from the influence of the propaganda that they are facing right now all over the world and nobody protects them. And, uh, and that's my last uh, remark that uh, we see that uh, uh, be children are being abused. Uh, they are being abused uh, by, because many use them as a tool of just uh, uh, underlining or somehow uh, uh, strengthening their ideological um, uh, approach. And children can never be, be abused in this uh, manner either. So that's why we have to protect our children. And that's uh, the aim of our uh, constitution amendment. Thank you for that. I let Mr. Bass ask you one last question before you have to leave. Uh, so, and for those who sent questions and couldn't have them answered on time, we're sorry about that, but we will send your questions. We will hand over your questions to Minister Novak right after the conference. And I invite you to take, uh, to, to get in touch with the FAFSI if you are interested in having answers. So, Mr. Bassi, please ask your question. Thank you very much. I mean, uh, there, there are many questions, but uh, I want just uh, uh, to give you an idea or some ideas because you ask for uh, ideas from uh, from us. I think that uh, um, the, 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 these uh, very interesting policies can be more efficient uh, if you can cooperate with the civil society. And we, when we were, when we meet, we met each other in Budapest. We were talking about the importance of the savings, the family savings. And I hope that we can, after this uh, this pandemic, we can meet each other, organizing something interesting, also discussing on the importance of the family savings. And on the other side, uh, we we are sure that we are trying also to help you to uh, develop uh, family associations also in your county. This is the first idea. The second uh, idea that for me is also uh, very important uh, is that uh, I understood uh, speaking with many people during this uh, time that uh, uh, it's very difficult to speak about demography because everybody uh, are afraid to touch uh, the freedom of the women uh, generating uh, children. I think that now also uh, with your politics, you demonstrate that the, the problem is on the opposite side. I mean, uh, the, the women want to have children, to generate children, but they can do they can do that because they they have obstacles. I think that uh, it's up it's up to you to convince uh, your colleagues uh, that now to speak about the freedom uh, of the couples uh, generating children it means that we have to invest on them because they want to create because uh, motherhood is not a constriction uh, and cannot be. A impossible dream should be a fully decision of the co the couples, and of course, uh, we need to uh, to be supported, but to recognize our role and our joyful responsibility. Uh, thank you so much, Vincenzo. Uh, just very briefly, uh, if if you allow me uh, to to reflect to your uh, to the to the issues you raised. First of all, um, uh, 
I, I was very happy to meet you and I would be very happy to, to uh, continue our cooperation. So almost always uh, welcome to, to Budapest, to Hungary. If you are free to travel already, then, uh, uh, then we, we would be happy to have you uh, and, and organize something together. And I also have to add that we will have this huge uh, Budapest Demographic Summit, which we organize every second year. It is going to take place in Budapest next September. So you are, all, of course, all, also invited and we would be happy to have you. It's always a very high-ranking high event. And sometimes I have the feeling that it's really a breath of fresh air that you can experience that there are people uh, who, who think uh, similarly on these issues. Uh, and uh, uh, yes, of, just as you said, civic society is very important. Uh, family organizations are very important. We are working closely together with almost 20 Hungarian family organizations on a daily basis, practically. Uh, and, uh, and also not only uh, civic organizations, but you also have to involve churches. You also have to involve the academic life. You also have to involve the, uh, the, the counterparts in the economic life. So the, the different... Uh, 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 in companies, they are also there to to represent the same family values or pro-family values. And um, to your second question, uh, I'm a woman. Uh, I am a mother of three children, and uh, and I would say that uh, you you say freedom. And I, sometimes I have the the feeling that while we were or we have been fighting so much for our freedom, we give up on our privileges because there are rights and there are privileges. And I think it is a privilege of a woman to have a child, to bear a child, to give birth to a child, to breastfeed a, chi a child. These are our privileges. And I think that we should never give up on our privileges while fighting for our rights. So uh, we should never give up our rights, but we shouldn't give up our privileges either. So what we should do is really help women and men to cooperate with each other and to be able to take these serious and sometimes very difficult de decisions uh, uh, about their futures. And when I give lectures to university students, the only thing I would like to deliver them as a message is that don't ever think that why you, will, you live longer, you are also fertile longer. It's very, I'm very sorry to say that, but it's not our 20s. It's not our thirties that be, have become longer in the last the centuries or year, uh, decades. It's our seventies and eighties. So it's the, it's it's even now it's the same time that you are biologically uh, ready and able to have children as a uh, decade uh, uh, or one hundred or two hundred years ago. These things haven't changed and. Uh, won't change in the future either. So when, when there is the time, then you have to be able to take these decisions. And, and as a state, uh, as a government, our goal and our duty is to help. And uh, we should enable uh, all, everybody, if they found each other, if they are ready to, to, to engage themselves uh, on having children, then there should be no financial and any other obstacles. Then they should be able to 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 do it. Uh, so that's what we can do. And uh, and uh, very, I'm I'm very grateful for your organizational work as well, and for everything what you are doing. We very much need you, and we are also there to support you whenever it's possible. And we also need your support. Thank you so much. And I will answer the questions uh, in a written form as well if I get them. Thanks. Thank Indeed. you very much. We are, thank you very much, Minister. We are receiving a lot of very interesting questions. So uh, we are very sorry for those who ask questions but be, and because uh, the Minister must leave because of her commitment, but uh, we will make sure that all of your questions will be uh, are handed over to the Minister so that she can reply in written. So thanks a lot, Mrs. Novak. Thank you for your time. It was very inspiring. Thank you so much, and uh, I promise you that I will later on watch uh, what you said afterwards because I am so interested. I'm sorry that I have to leave right now. Thank you so much. Thank you so much, Minister Novak. Goodbye.
So let's now give the floor to Vincenzo Bassi, who will share his analysis on the recovery plan. Uh, as we will see, he's convinced that the survival of the European Union depends on families. Uh, but Mr. Bassi, I would also like to ask you something regarding uh, the recent announcement in Italy of the uh, 196 billion euro recovery plan approved by the Italian government, uh, and which is raising a lot of criticism in the country. Only 7 billion uh, was allocated to the medical fields, uh, while the, the urgency seems to be the race for gender equality, uh, which will receive 17.1 billion euros after the so-called Green Revolution, to which uh, 74.3 billion euros will be devoted. As a woman, I was also personally uh, struck uh, by such a focus on male women parity in this time of huge social crisis. Does that mean that women who are willing to be housewives or to take care of their children shouldn't be included in that plan? Uh, shouldn't they be considered? It is something that you know, has been raising criticism and I, I believe we should address that topic. How did you interpret such a political choice? <laughs> what can I say? What should I say? It's a, it's a difficult to be polite on one side, on the other side, to be precise. I mean, I think that it was uh, this recovery plan uh, as proposed by our government is, uh, by Italian government, is very uncertain. It's just uh, some slogans uh, and I don't think it will be uh, the, the definitive text uh, uh, because uh, as you said, uh, there are many discussions uh, here in Italy also because of the governance of uh, of this uh, of the use of these funds uh, uh, so i think that we have to be uh, optimist and we don't to give up uh, our hope because i'm sure that the family is uh, in each of the topic or the issues that you that you you approached. I mean, um, um, now we try and we have to convince everybody. First of all, that when we speak because when we speak about tax justice, we speak about families, and so we are not talking about gift. We are just talking about tax justice. So, as also the tax issue is one part of the recovery fund, we have to be able to convince our government that uh, this is an opportunity to make uh, our uh, tax system uh, uh, um, uh, more uh, more just and so we are not asking for uh, for uh, some privilege we are just asking for for uh, justice. So uh, now, if we explain very well the reality of the family in, in, in terms of, uh, of engagement, in terms of uh, possession of income and so on, maybe we can include also in this reform some, uh, uh, some, uh, some um, details uh, in favor of the families. This is one issue. And if you speak about the green economy, in the same way, the point is uh, is not uh, if that we are against uh, the green economy, not against the uh, the equality. It's not this is not the question. The point is we need the people to manage it in order to to have to 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 have people. We need, of course, a natality. Also, because uh, um, um, we have to agree on one fact very clear. Uh, the, 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 we can have a sustainable development only if we have intergenerational balance. So when we speak about, about the green economy, we speak also about intergenerational relations. It's impossible to think about a future without the children. And our goal now is try to convince them not to change their opinion because I don't like to say that you have you, you are wrong or I am right it's not this is not the point the point is I, I want to include in your uh, reasoning also uh, the demography this is uh, our approach and I think we can succeed because when we talk uh, not in an ideological way but just uh, departing from the reality we hope to convince um, uh, I am afraid for one reason, 
because we, we, we need more participation in deciding which kind of policies, which kind of initiative should, should be supported by this recovery fund. If they find, if this recovery plan will be managed by a, a, a strict circle, of course, it will be very difficult because in that case, in that case, the ideology can, could prevail, prevail. Because of course, if you, you don't have an exchange with the reality, with the real needs of the people and with the real inspiration of the aspiration of the people the, uh, concerning the future, concerning their life, concerning the realization as a person, of course, it will be very difficult to have uh, uh, the possibility to use that funds in a realistic and very useful way. Terrific. Thank you very much, Mr. Bassi. Uh, we have a remark from um, we have a remark from Leticia Pulikan from uh, NBC Ethics, uh, speaking about demography. Uh, so she's saying that uh, the EC perspective is aging and not tackling the demographic winter in any way. Uh, do you have any thoughts about that? As I said, uh, also talking with uh, Mrs. Novak, uh, if you look at uh, the reports from uh, European Commission, for example, you can uh, you can uh, notice, you can realize uh, that they are, they were not they are not interested of uh, uh, the solution of this demographic winter. They want just to manage uh, uh, the, these uh, demographic changes. It is something different, and it was very interesting also because you can uh, you can uh, see that, for example, they have different way of managing these demographic changes uh, depending on uh, on, the, uh, on, the, on the on the on the on the countries. For example, in the center of Europe, they say that they can. Uh, try to manage these demographic changes, just uh, um, increasing the productivity of the elderly. And in the, in the periphery is different because they, they need more uh, social policies in favor of, uh, of natality. It's strange because uh, the point in the demographic uh, changes regard uh, all Europe not just one part, another part. One part is more productive and they can, uh, they can be, again, more productive because they have immigration from uh, all Europe and also from uh, outside. Or the, or the, 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 the little countries, they, they, they have other problems because they are empty, they are becoming uh, emptier. So I think that we have to uh, speak much more about the freedom of the people to generate new lives. This is uh, 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 very important. And on the other side, that uh, we have to realize, uh, to, uh, to realize that without any demographic solution, uh, which comes from uh, more birth and not only more immigration, the Maastricht criteria will collapse because with just with elderly, we'll have more public debt, we'll have more inflation, more deficit. But uh, uh, I don't, uh, I don't uh, accept misunderstanding. The problem of Europe uh, is, uh, uh, is not the elderly, is the fact that we don't have children anymore. We are very happy that we have elderly, much more elderly than in the past, because it's also the result of our economic uh, uh, and uh, scientific development. The point is we need children. And we need children, of course, for economic reasons, but we want to convince everybody that having children is also make people happy. Now, our economic uh, situation is bad because for us it's very difficult to test to to demonstrate how um, how nice is uh, to generate people because there are so many obstacles uh, put by the legal systems by by the environment general environment to generate children and it does not encourage people having other children now in in during this current time most of the times uh, generating children is something uh, uh, that uh, is uh, uh, considered as uh, uh, heroic uh, decision but i am uh, three children i don't feel hero 
and I don't, I don't think that uh, it's up to the hero generating children. We have to, uh, to struggle and to convince that this, is, uh, this situation doesn't, doesn't have a future. Very interesting. We have a very uh, inspiring question from the Acton Institute in Italy, and maybe you can answer that question, and as well as Antoine Renard, honorary president of the FAFC afterwards in his final remarks, because it is a very uh, important question, I believe. He says, uh, I like very much the idea of supporting mothers and fathers to take care uh, for their newborn or in terms of a family emergency. So his question is, does this have to come from a state wealth, uh, welfare insurance policy? Like all public welfare, uh, there is an inevitable burden passed on to the taxpayers uh, that do currently work to maintain salaries or absent workers. Uh, can there be some private work leave insurance uh, that is integrated into a salary uh, which also protects the jobs for the mother or father on extended leave? I mean, uh, I think that it's very difficult to, to create a model in order to support families. It depends on, the, on each country. Uh, on each state, each, uh, even each uh, uh, village, because uh, I mean, now I'm living in Rome, but uh, in my life I lived in small uh, cities, in big cities, and I know that the needs uh, are not always the same. The only thing that we can be inspired by this pandemic. Uh, during this time, uh, the loneliness was uh, the, 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 the worst uh, sickness of the families. So first of all, we need to create more uh, um, network of families in order also to help uh, each family to understand which kind of uh, help they need. Then I hope that it will be every, uh, more and more possible to create such a mutualistic uh, uh, form of uh, helping families. As we said many times, families must help other families. Then, according to, to the subsidiary principle, we can also receive uh, help from the state. Now, this scheme is not possible because there are so many obstacles in uh, creating initiatives, mutual initiatives, initiatives in favor of families. Uh, it's very difficult. And we, 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 we have to struggle not to have a privilege or to have a, a gift. We, we, we don't to have, a, um, um, yes, privilege. We don't have to ask for privilege. We, we're just asking for justice because the, the families themselves, they know firstly what they need. So I hope that uh, we can manage the families' problems uh, through a uh, network of families. And uh, in order to do that, uh, we need to be uh, on, one, on our side more responsible and on, this, on the public side, they don't have to put uh, so many obstacles as uh, um, they did, uh, they, have been, they have been doing during, uh, in, uh, the, uh, in this time. This is, uh, this is my opinion. Thank you very much for this answer. Uh, let's um, now speak to, uh, to Antoine, Antoine Renard, honorary president of the FAFC. He will uh, now do the final remarks. And I would, I would like very much him to answer that question as well, because I believe it is something very important. And I would like to add another question uh, by John and Ilevi uh, Brunbauer, uh, who ask another important question for, uh, I believe, that would be very interesting to have Antoine Renard answer that, uh, which is, do you think the unwillingness to have children has to do with some materialistic, atheistic values? Uh, how would you suggest to tackle it? So uh, I now give the floor to Antoine Renard, honorary president of the FAFC, who will so uh, conclude this, uh, this event. Thank you very much. Thank you very much. <clears throat> for this extremely difficult question, which is the last one, so I will not start with this one. Um, I should uh, uh, underline what uh, Mrs. Novak said. She said we want uh, to promote a family-friendly Hungary, a family-friendly country. 
not only a family-friendly government. And this means that uh, we need uh, family-friendly cities, we need family-friendly enterprises, we need everybody to be uh, concentrated on this. And then all the solutions will, will, will come when the families themselves express at work in the city and to the government and express their needs, then the solutions may come. According to the uh, very simple subsidiarity principle that the families know what they need to start their family life. I like, of course, very much what Mrs. Novak said that the government is there to help and uh, look for what, what are the needs and to help, to help so that the conditions are created for the families to do their job. And then a nation can work and, and can continue and grow because a nation has a right to grow as a nation. And this is, of course, coming from the families supported by a government, which is there not to decide, but to help and support. So um, now is the uh, unwillingness to have children coming from some uh, ideology? Yes, of course. Uh, and, and this is uh, coming from um, loneliness and from a, a, a very strange evolution of the uh, uh, demands for rights, which are more and more individualistic. But we also see that this is not, this is not making people happy. So uh, we we'll have to, to, to find a, a positive way to um, uh, step out of this individualistic uh, uh, situation and uh, heavy trend here in Europe. When, when people get uh, more and more alone, they are more and more sad. And this is a very vicious circuit. So um, I remember in, in the, uh, just after the, uh, uh, the, the, the fail of the, uh, of the Berlin Wall, uh, I visited the Czech Republic and uh, I had discussions with uh, looking at the uh, refreshing the houses in the country. And um, I asked, oh, it looks very nice, but it's very fresh, very new. Yes, the answer was, uh, in the former time, it was not necessary to rebuild the building because nobody was looking up when uh, walking in the street. They were only concentrated on their feet. And this is exactly the loneliness and sad situation which we have to fight against. Of course, there is some spirituality in it, uh, but we should not be afraid about that. We have really something to, to, to tell to the people that uh, uh, um, we are all designed for social relationship. It is not good that man should be alone. This is the first intent in the Bible. So that's the key issue in the topic. So, uh, well, uh, I would like to, to make uh, another remark, uh, which uh, Mrs. Novak uh, did not mention about privilege. And I, I've seen during the, this meeting and presentation that one of her privilege was a very fantastic smile, which is very, very much communicating. And uh, after she was talking, I looked at the picture and everyone was smiling. So yes, it is a fight, it's a heavy fight, but it's going to make us happy if we do it properly. Uh, <laughs> our discussion, because I, I think now time is, uh, time is, is working against us. I think that uh, this webinar and very many thanks to Vincenzo for organizing it and very many thanks to you um, <clears throat> for moderating, uh, came at a very excellent moment uh, because you, you may know that uh, yesterday, the president of the European Council, Mr. Michel, uh, in his invitation letter to the European Council, uh, which is taking place at the moment, said that he was confident to find an agreement on the common package to allow for the swift implementation of the multi-annual financial framework and the recovery fund. So there had been a lot of discussions and difficulties, obstacles, but now we are on the right track. So it's the right moment for us to show up and to say, hey, look, uh, look to the basis. So this is an important step forward, but we all know that it will not be enough. We also need that uh, all national governments uh, use their this money as an investment for a very critical topic, which is the same everywhere, 
family. Family is the basis that was said very clearly by the Pope uh, at uh, many uh, opportunities. If there is no family, the cultural survival of the world is in danger. So family is the basis and the governments have to concentrate on, on to help and to, to make it happen, to make it happen, not to do instead of the people and not to ignore those who do not like it, but to help making it happen. <coughs> So the uh, and, and another topic which was mentioned by uh, Vincenzo, which is uh, extremely important, is that the government should not do it alone. They they have to do it with the with the families, with the civil society, and especially with the uh, um, family associations, which. Uh, uh, are starting and should be furthermore developed. We should use this time to, to um, develop family associations everywhere, not only at uh, national level, but also at city level, because uh, a, a significant uh, part of the family policy can be uh, uh, established at uh, uh, um, city level. I mean, uh, uh, regarding transport, regarding leisures, regarding uh, also work. Everything has to restart in Europe from the basis, which is from the cities and from the families in the cities. <clears throat> so uh, I think, uh, again, one more time, Mrs. Novak delivered a, a very, very nice speech uh, uh, explaining that uh, the basis is, is should be uh, um, legally organized, which means in the constitution and, and of the families and the children should be protected by the constitutions of all our countries as much as possible. And then comes the time to uh, support and to help. When the, the uh, conditions are created, uh, it is the task of the government to, to enter into dialogue with the representative of the civil society so that the money is not spent uh, um, uh, uselessly, but properly invested in the long run, so that people are confident in the conditions which are created. And when confidence is there, then people do their job. And, and their job uh, is, of course, producing a, a lot of good for the whole society. So uh, let's, uh, let's hope that uh, uh, this, this big amounts of money which are uh, being created now will be properly invested and uh, not spent uh, in, in a um, useless... Uh, we know that there will be a, a lot of pressure uh, um, and, and we need uh, strong uh, people to, to, to concentrate on the most important tasks and to, to renew in, in a right way uh, uh, what is to be done to, to make our Europe again uh, flourishing, producing uh, intergeneration support, producing work, producing all what is needed for any individual to develop his own life. Uh, it is certainly a good idea to, to look for, the, for the, the basics. And the very first one is, of course, a roof. A family needs a roof, a family needs work, family need time together and family need needs a culture which is self-supporting so let's hope this will work i'm quite optimistic when i see all those people really committed to this uh, and i would like again to uh, thank you vincenzo for the very good idea of organizing these FAFSE dialogues and uh, thank you very much to you solen for your excellent and smiling uh, moderation of our meeting. Let's let's now uh, go to our homework.
<laughs> Thank you very much, Mr. Rena, for this rich and intense reflection. I understand there is still much to discuss here, uh, as there is a lot at stake, but I'm sure uh, that uh, will be something possible in the next sessions. And I believe, Mr. Bassi, you have the intention to organize more events uh, like this in the coming months, so I'm sure it will be possible to deepen uh, uh, these very interesting reflections that we had today. So thank you all very much for taking part in the discussions and hopefully we can uh, see each other very soon for real and uh, continue this virtual discussion and build all together a, a better future for Europe and the European Union and for families.